Amen. Amen. We are grateful to God for, for giving us life and also for keeping all of us. And today our message is very simple. Uh, because of the occasion, the reason for the occasion is to come together, invite friends, family members, and those who have not been to church for a long time, uh, telling them that the church is now reopened and that people can start. Or shall, shall continue to worship God. Amen. Amen. So we have, we have titled the sermon this way, that Joshua helps the people to renew their covenant with God. It was a special assembly that he organized, and the focus was for the people to renew their commitment, their covenant, their love that they had with the Almighty God. And uh, we find ourselves in a similar Situation, And I think uh, Joshua did a great job, hallelujah, Amen. by helping the people to renew their covenant with God. The people had already forsaken God. They had turned to idol worship. And this old man, he looked at them and organized that great meeting and said, as for me and my household, we shall serve the living God. And the people said, we shall also serve this God. And Joshua led them to renew their covenant with God. In our present context, due to the pandemic and other reasons, we all know what uh, we all know what has been going on. Many people have stopped worshiping God, and many have stopped living as God's children. There are a lot of Christians; they are no more living the way God wants them to live. Although they have not turned to physical idol worship, but they have also uh, stopped. Uh, with their covenant with God. But God's word tells us that although in this end time there may be wars, earthquakes, diseases, famines, and persecutions, whoever shall endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. Amen. The book of Matthew 24 verse 14 reads that, that in this end times there will be all kinds of things. Diseases, earthquakes, so now even in, in Haiti now, what is going on there is not very, very good at all. So we are going to see and hear of, of all kinds of, of, of crisis. But the word of God tells us that whoever shall endure to the end, what this means is that if you can still keep your faith in the living God until the Lord calls you home, you shall be saved. Or until the end of the world, if you are to be alive by then, you shall be saved. Whosoever shall endure. So worshiping God, coming to church, reading your Bible, and doing all that God has spent of us will not be that easy. And so the word is if you can endure to the end. Right, if you can endure. So let's go to Matthew 24 10 and see what our Lord tells us about our present situation. Matthew 24 10. To fourth. He says, at that time, many would turn away from the faith, that's the Christian faith. Many would stop believing in God and, and would betray and hate each other in this end time. So in, so in this end time, instead of love, we, we see uh, hatred. Verse 11, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people, and now they are out there plenty. We have a lot of false prophets out there. If your faith in God is not strong and you just want to follow miracles and, and you are not disciplined to, to stay away from an ungodly life, then this false prophet, they are likely to deceive you. Because they will promise you, I will do this for you without telling you to live a holy life, which is a key requirement. And so Christ warns us here, hallelujah, Amen. that, that the, they will appear. And I think it's good that some, from time to time we mention some of them. Amen. Verse 12, because of the increase of wickedness. So in this end times, in, in, uh, wickedness will abound. Wickedness means suppressing what is true. It's not just being a sinner, but suppressing what is true. Incre uh, wickedness will increase. The love of most people will grow cold. And I'm sure there are some of you, your love, the love in your heart is not as passionate and as warm as it used to be because of all the things that you've been through. So the love of most people will grow cold 
And if your love grow cold, grows cold, then you know that you are in big trouble. Because love, if you like, is the fuel we burn for energy. If you don't have love in your heart, you realize that you are always weak and timid. You cannot do much. Love is like fuel. It burns in a human soul. Then you, you are set on fire. So if, so if someone is in love, that man or that man is crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. That's crazy. And the Bible says because of uh, wickedness, the love of most people will grow cold. Verse 13. But the one who stands firm to the end shall be saved. To the end here means to the end of the world or the end of your own life. If you continue to endure in the midst of all this, to the end of your life, at the age of 70, 80, 90, any age, the Lord will call you home. You shall be saved. But if you stray, if you stop and depart, then as we all know, it means that you have no belief. The verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And as I said in the announcement that the church, we are now getting to that point where we need to take the gospel to other parts of the world. Amen. Amen. And we need at least about a year or 18 months or two years to prepare ourselves. That maybe at, at today, Sunday, half of the church will be in Birmingham doing crusade. And half will be here worshiping God. Because what we'll be doing is that everyone will be okay with your faith, family life, your finances, so, so, so once we are out there, we are out there. Hallelujah. Amen. And so everyone, please, Try to uh, sit up a little bit and sort your life out nicely so that when the time comes, uh, we shall all embark on that trip to the utmost part of the world. And so Jesus is telling us that and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. So uh, coming back to our note, yes, in our times, like the days of... Uh, Joshua, we must also begin to put things right. So our aim this afternoon is very simple. To encourage people to renew their relationship with God. And to continue their faith life in Jesus till the end. Amen. Amen. That is our focus. Very simple sermon. That, that just sit and, and tell yourself that I think today I'm going to renew my, my love for God. My relationship. My covenant. And the hymn we sang says that I surrender everything to Jesus. And will you, that is a question, will you surrender everything to Jesus and be on that journey today? All to Jesus. And when Joshua encouraged them, he said, now throw away all those gods and worship God. And, and this afternoon we shall also throw away everything that hinders us from loving God from serving God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's look at a few things. Uh, we shall be looking at the fact that, or we shall try to address whether the meeting that Joshua organized was important or not. It is the same way as saying that the church service, or uh, the same way as asking a question, this question that, that is, is church service important? Is church service important? I mean, at this morning when we were dressing up, a doctor was asking me, so who will be serving the, no, no, he said, he said, she said, what type of uh, pizza are we going to eat today? <laughs> Just a question. Isn't it? And I said, I don't know. And he said, ah, you should know. I said, no. Johnny and Sydney and, and Jim Dems and, and Jesse Dems are in charge organizing the, the, the pizza. So I don't really know the time. And he said, no. But you organize this whole special Sunday thing. <laughs> I was like, really? Okay, so is this service important? As Douglas has reminded me, that you have put all this together so you should know the type of pizza you are going to eat. I said, I have no idea. Is it really important? And Joshua, we will try to address this. Oh, yes, that's how it's simple, yes, but it's good we understand why, yes. Such uh, meetings are organized, and the moment we invoke God's name, 
means that they are organized in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what it means. That. So if we go to the main text at Joshua 24 verse 1, and this is what the text tells us. Joshua 24 1 says that then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at second. That's all the 12 tribes. He assembled all of them. So this was not the usual Sabbath gathering or other, other uh, uh, special uh, uh, days uh, in scripture. It was special than that. So then Joshua assembled, assembled all of the tribes. He summoned the elders, the leaders, the judges, and, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. So it was a great gathering that he organized. And what makes it special was the fact that it was not done in the presence of the living God. So when God's people come together like this, in the name of God, it means that we are in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what makes it very special. And this is also done in heaven. That in heaven, the angels of God, from time to time, they present themselves to God Almighty. They show themselves. They gather in the presence of the Almighty God and say, Father, look at us. And so in some sense, church service also represent this. In the book of Job 1, 6, which I'm sure we know this text very well, it talks about how, I think we can go to that text, to read that text, to get the book of Job uh, 1, 6, how the angels of God presented themselves before the living God. And even, even Satan went there as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan went there because Satan too, it, by nature, is a child of God. But by faith, he's not a child of God. By nature means God made him, created him. But by faith, he is not because he does not obey God. And elsewhere in the gospel, Christ tells us that my brothers and sisters are those who obey the word of the living God, right? And so from that, we know those who are, who are truly God's children. The book of Job 1 says, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. Church service in heaven. They present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them. Because then God started preaching. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? So God was having conversation with his people. So what uh, Joshua did to organize that very important meeting was something that uh, was also done in heaven. And church service is also has, the, I mean, the same uh, element, hallelujah. Amen. That, that we gather in the presence of the living God. And every human being must regularly present themselves before God. And the New Testament, we call this church service of fellowship. In the New Testament. Church service. So we come, we sing praises, we worship God, we pray to Him, we hear His word, we expect Him to touch us, you know, to heal us, comfort us. And then through His word, we are comforted and instructed on how to live as his chosen people in a fallen world from time to time. So every Sunday in the Christian calendar and also in the course of the week, we have special meetings. Every human being must do this. And of course, we have a, a, a lot to, I think we can read the book of Hebrews 10, 24. And we see here, the writer was encouraging uh, the people that look, it's good that everyone should continue to not forsake the assembly of the brethren. The book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, we can read. He says, let us consider how we may spare or encourage one another on toward love and good deeds. We encourage people to love and to do what is good. Five, 25, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Hallelujah. Amen. The day, the day, the, the, the day is, is, is 
capital D, which is the day, the judgment day approaching, which is encourage everyone to come into God's house. And the book of Acts is full of God's people coming together like this to encourage themselves. And therefore, today's service is organized for you, as we said, to renew your relationship with God and others, like Joshua did for the people. Some will renew their love for God today. There are some of you in your heart who don't really love God that much. Your love for God has, has grown cold. Some will start coming to church regularly again, as many of you are doing. Some will start to read their Bible and expect the Father to speak to them. Some will start to live a holy life because we are God's children and God wants us to live a holy life. And so I'm sure today some of you will make that decision to live a holy life to the Lord. And I'm sure there are some of you who also say goodbye to your old life. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially if your old life uh, is not really helping you. I keep asking people, then what is the point? Just change and then have a better life. Amen. Amen. Anything you do that is not helping you, just tell yourself, no, I'm not, I'm, I won't do this anymore. But because I want a better life. I want a better life. I want to progress. I want to do well. I want to make it to heaven. I say, any lifestyle that is not helping. I say goodbye. Some who also receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Christ is the one the Father sent to die for our sins. Some of you this afternoon will do that. And others perhaps will also respond to be baptized. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, a lot of churches now have expressed interest in our baptism too. Which, which is good. Amen. Amen. Good. So, yeah, they'll be coming to use our pool and we shall chat them with the Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 and now, when we were building, I said, Oh, it will be free in a church. I, I, I read that we spent almost 8000 building up. So, so I think it's, it's not too wise if, 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 if we do it for free. Do you agree on that? I know we are charity, that's what you say. But when we're looking for money, there's no charity to have. <laughs> so, so if you are coming to do baptism from another church, that the church, at least 100 pounds will be okay, 200 pounds, hallelujah. Yeah. You no, know, a lot of churches, they are express interest to come and use our baptism. So I'm sure, but of course, the pool is for us, so here, is, is free. Uh, I'm sure there are some of you who decide to be baptized after giving their life to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give your life. Such special meetings, they are important because in the presence of God, we make important decisions. And that is why every Christian marriage is brought before God at the altar for their vows to be given and exchanged so that God will bless the union. And as we said in the announcement, next, next two weeks there'll be a wedding service here, and at the end of the service we shall introduce the couple. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, it's good to announce to the church that we now have grace for singles to settle easily in the church. So if you're a single man, single man, just open your heart and receive. We now have it. So this day we are not even organizing seminars to encourage, I, I mean, because everything has been set up. Yes. So if you are a single person, just open your heart and receive. As I said, the church is going to the next phase of we want to do missions now. So we are coming to pray for grace for missions. We now have grace to settle down and to live as Christians. We are praying for the grace. So, so uh, today I'm sure someone will decide to be baptized. And, and there may be some of you who will be also be uh, willing to start serving God in the church. Because everything that is done in the church is done by human beings. It is done by you and I. So after service, we are going to have fantastic time together. There will be some food and drinks. Everything that you eat and drink have been prepared by human beings. And everything done here. So some of you must now also commit some of your time and, 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 and energy to serve God in this church so that a great things will be done by the Lord. Uh, let's talk about a renewed covenant with God. Was it important for the people to renew their covenant? Don't forget our focus is on this subject that Joshua helped the people to renew their covenant with God. 
very important occasion. Was it important? Uh, let's try to look at this briefly. Yes, it was important because of their tendency to stray, to move away from God. Amen. Amen. We all have the tendency to stray. Every human being to move away from God. What this means is that we can all decide to stop coming to church. We can all decide to stop reading the Bible. We can all decide to give ourselves good reasons not to come to church. Yes, every human being. I mean, there are times that even as a pastor, I tell myself, ah, this work is difficult. Is there any way that someone else can do this job? Yeah, all of us. I, I, I just ask myself the same question. We all have the tendency to say, I think enough is enough. And in one of my project work, it just ha happened that after after addressed this very question, and so and so I argue strongly that as uh, as a migrant missionary or a believer from Africa, we are not. It is not. It is not our tax to convert the whole society into Christ. In other words, as Africans or Asians or Jamaicans or our, 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 our tax is to worship God wherever we find ourselves. But to convert the whole society to the Christian, but that's not our tax. It is the work of the whole society. Do you understand? So what, 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 what I'm arguing is that for the British people to go back to the Lord in numbers should be the work of the British people, not we Africans. And so from time to time, I keep, I mean, reading that session, isn't it? And then it gives me some kind of relief. Hallelujah. But no, because if you read any missionary book, yeah, it is expected that those of us who go to church every Sunday, we are the ones to convert the, I mean, the most of Sunday. They expect us to do that job. And it's just a huge work. Just a big one. Big. So, so I, I, of course, biblically and historically, that. No migrant uh, 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 community can convert the whole society. It's always done by the whole society themselves. And so all of us, we have the strong tendency to say that we will not worship God again. Yes? We will not go to church again. Oh, we are tired. We all have that tendency. In the book of uh, Revelation 2, 4, and 5, Christ was even telling the church that, 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 that they had forsaken their first love. Hallelujah. And so, this and, 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 and this is the reason why it is important, or it was important for Joshua to organize that a great assembly for the people to renew their uh, covenant with God. This also gives people the opportunity to connect and reconnect with God once again. Amen. Amen. So there are some of you. It's been a long time you've been to church or properly prayed or. Now, so, so today's service will give you the opportunity to reconnect with your father in heaven. To reconnect with your father in heaven. The people that Joshua helped, uh, they have been worshipping the wrong God. Their own gods as they saw fit. Their children did not even know the true God. Because if mom and dad, if you don't go to church, your children, unless they are given this uh, training at school, they will not know God. So most of their kids did not even know the God of Israel. And so that meeting was a crucial meeting, important. They were idol worshippers. And so that was a great opportunity. And true worship of God is based not on our terms, but on his terms. Hallelujah. Amen. That's true worship. If you really want to God, you can't do it your own way. You have to worship God the way he has instructed us. John 4, 23, 24, Christ says that a time will come where the true worshipers worship their father in spirit and in truth. In spirit, that means in his spirit. You must have his spirit 
to worship Him. You cannot worship God with your own spirit because of, the, of our fallenness. That's true worship. And so then those people must be born again and receive the Spirit of God so that the worship that will come out from them will come from the Spirit that the Father has given them. Hallelujah. Amen. And the New Testament, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, through whom all of us receive forgiveness, can also receive the Holy Spirit. We cannot worship the great God anyhow. So later we'll come to read, Joshua was telling them, you cannot worship this God. And the people were like, we shall worship. And, then, and he said, then fear him. And then he's a jealous God. He's a great God. We can't worship him the way we like. No. No. And many people are worshiping God wrongly. And so they don't experience his blessings. If you don't worship God the right way, you will not. You have to worship God the right way. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament, that body of literature about which the people were to be instructed from uh, was given to Moses. In the Old Testament, they will look at the law of Moses. And in the New Testament, John 1, 17 says that grace and truth came to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So Christ tells us how we should worship the Father. And then we set scriptures and we worship God accordingly. And so that meeting was key for their covenant to be renewed. And this afternoon, I'm sure uh, many of us, if not all of us, will renew our relationship and love that we have for God. And so let's go back to our text. Look at the call Joshua made and the responses of the people, right? So we go to Joshua 24, 13 to, to 24. We are going to look at how Joshua did it. And you, you can learn something from this that how to respond to the word of God. It's, it's, yeah. So, 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 so it's, it's crucial here. Yeah. The moment you hear God's word, just believe it and accept it. And then receive the blessings. Amen. Yeah. Just, don't just listen and, and go home the same. Listen and respond. Very important. Joshua 24, verse 1 says, Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Sechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before the Lord. So he was now telling them a lot of things. Let's jump to verse 13. Now, having told the people all that God did for them, he also added this. Verse 13, Joshua 24, 13. So I gave you a lamb on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them, and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Verse 40, now fear the Lord, and serve him with all faithfulness. You fear God. Of course, you can take that fear to mean to respect God, but the fear here means to fear God, because God can put you into hellfire. Amen. Amen. And that's what Jesus tells us in the yeah. Gospels. He said that don't only fear the one who can destroy just the body, but destroy the one who can destroy the body and the soul and the spirit. And so you must fear God that he can put you uh, in hellfire. So fear him. Hallelujah. Amen. And you also add that then serve him faithfully with all faithfulness. But God is a faithful God. Faithfulness. Now, he says, throw the gods your ancestors worship beyond uh, the uh, Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, throw away all the gods. Throw away all the gods. And yet the gods were simple. They were the object of worship that the people are uh, depending on. They had idols, and those idols, had, they had demons in them. They have spirits in them. And so they were watching that. And Joshua was like, throw all these away. Don't bring spirits into your homes. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they will destroy your marriages and children. And, and then will destroy everything. Yeah. Throw them away. 
And, and now, now, because a lot of people don't really understand much about religion and spirituality, you know, people want to worship anything at all. No, we have good spirits and we have bad spirits. Mm. We have good spirits and bad spirits. And so when we don't teach our young people this, then they give themselves over to all kinds of spirits. And here Joshua was very good, hallelujah. He said, throw away all the gods. Throw the gods your ancestors worship beyond uh, the uh, Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Third, 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the river, the, the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. So now he drew his knife. He said, choose. Either you serve the living God, or you serve idols. And so that's why the meeting was crucial. Hallelujah. Amen. That's very important. It says, serve the living God. Or, but if you want to serve the idols, myself, and my household vision. And every family here, please try to serve God. Amen. Amen. Mom, dad, try to agree to go to church together. And so that the children will also follow you. Amen. Amen. It is very important. And Joshua was giving them this opportunity. He said, now make that decision. They want to serve the living God or idols. Let's see what the people said. 16. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. But meanwhile, they were doing it. <laughs> they, 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 they were worshiping idols. Uh, but the question was very direct that the people, people had to readjust their position. Hallelujah. They had to say, Far be it from us. It's just like what the Nigerian man would say, Tafia. Right? That is the window. Me wanted the worshiping. <laughs> 17. Listen to what they said. It was the Lord our God Himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us and our and our entire journey and among all the nations through, through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who live in the land. We too will serve the Lord because He is our God. Church, let me stop here to tell you that if any man, if you sit any man, any woman down and, and, and tell him or her this, his or her conclusion, even if he will do it, we say, I will serve the Lord. It's just that the moment you go back, you know, they'll go back to their old lifestyle. Because every human being knows that. He or she lives in this world because of God. Everyone. That is the truth. And so they themselves were like, it was God who saved us and protected us. So we serve the Lord. Joshua presented them with a hard truth that they themselves were even preaching to Joshua. And this afternoon, I'm sure there are many of you, if you really examine your life carefully, I'm sure your conclusion will be that. I'm alive because of the grace of the living God. All of us. And of course, for me, that notion always challenges me to give my whole life to serve God. Because I know if I don't serve God, I don't know the type of kind of life I will live. Of course, as a young man, my aim was very simple. Just study, have a good job, and just be a normal Christian. You know a normal Christian's life? Normal Christian, I've just come to church. After seven, say hi, hi, then go home. That's a normal thing. And then I will live a good life. And then if I tell you my good life, uh, you will even tell yourself that then you are not really doing anything yet. Yeah, my good life. I plan very well at the age of 24, 25. But then the grace of God from time to time helped me to realize that look, if you live that life, you won't live long. You waste your life in this world. 
Because all that you do is to work hard, earn money, and spend. And that is not life. It's not life. So then we gave ourselves to God 100%. And then later on, he called us into his ministry. And the people were like, it was the Lord who protected us. Therefore, we do shall serve the Lord. And, and God has been kind to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, at this pandemic, we, we, we've had a lot of, of, of bad stuff. And one of the day, a brother called and said, Bishop, I'm dying. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm dying. One, I have COVID, I'm coughing, and just full of blood, look at me. I can't sleep, I can't eat. Just this year, and I'm dying. So I, I sat in the car, it, it, I mean, it was a Sunday afternoon after, after online service. I sat in the car, drove to the house, and then the wife said, Bishop, don't come, because all of us here, we've got COVID. Then I said, don't worry. Me, myself, I've had the COVID, and I've recovered. So, so let's be together. So then he opened the door, then I also entered. And then he said, look at me, Bishop, he will, he will cough blood. He said, I'm dying. My lungs are gone. I said, how do you know? He said, I'm dying. He said, Bishop, can you see I'm dying? <laughs> see, I can't even breathe. See, look at me, don't breathe. <laughs> you are laughing, this is serious, my dog. I said, no, 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 you don't die, just relax. Have you taken your medication? Have you called there? Is it 111 or 9 or something? Have you? He said, yeah, they've said, I said, just calm down. Get some food to eat. In fact, they had nothing to eat because they were all isolated, yeah? So I said, okay, let me go to Tesco's and get, what do you want? So they listed, I drove, got all the things I brought. I said, drink, 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 drink. I sat down for two hours. And then before I left, I was sleeping. Later on, that, later on the ambulance came. They attended to him. They took him to the hospital. Thank God they brought him back. They said, everything seems to be okay, so calm down. You know, he's alive. I mean, he was here last week Sunday. Today he's working, that's why he's not in church. So if God has kept all of us safe like this, and if you say you worship God, then I say, what? <laughs> then it's on to you. Amen. Then it's on to you. And not only this COVID, the many other instances that God has been doing. And so the people were like, we too shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. We too shall serve. Verse 19. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is holy God. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you. After he has been good to you. So Joshua was like, to serve this living God, you must be serious. Amen. Amen. It is not something you want in and you are out. You want in and you are out. No, no, no. Because he's a jealous God. And I think I, 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 I've been telling the church that there is no true love without jealousy, right? There is no true love without jealousy. If you love someone, there will always be jealousy. And not in a negative sense. And so if God loves you and you don't love him back, he's not happy. So Joshua was telling them that, look, me, me and my household, we serve God. And this God is a jealous God because he loves you. He will not play with your feelings. He loves you. So when you are coming to worship him, just be a bit serious. He said he's a holy God, meaning that he's a God who has set himself apart. He's different from all the other gods. He's not like any other God. He's holy and, right, and righteous. And so you, you can't serve him with, with this attitude. No, you cannot. You are in your heart. You are not so sure. If you do that, you disturb his love. In fact, the book of Revelation, Christ was saying that because you are lukewarm, I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. Because I cannot contain that man, that woman who's lukewarm. I want you to be on fire. And I'm sure we all know how 
uncomfortable someone can make our lives if the person's love is, is, is not really there. Look what is it? You agree? As if she loves you or not, you are not you are confused. As if he loves you or not, you don't even know. And you have to say, please tell me, do you love me? And Joshua was like, with this attitude, my, my brother, you cannot worship this great God. He is a jealous God. And he will not forsake you. I will not let, uh, I, I forgive you if you rebel. After he has been good to you. 21, listen to the people's response. The people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. And they said, yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then Joshua said, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Throw away your object of worship. Let go of that which prevents you from worshiping God. They throw them away. And of course, I'm sure after the summer, we have to take time to talk about religion and spirituality again so that uh, people will not just believe that all religions are equal and that you can worship any God at all and still uh, see yourself as a Christian. We shall also mention some of the dangers if you, if you worship spirits. For if you worship spirits, the spirit will disturb you. For human beings are not supposed to worship or engage with spirits at all. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need a special teachings on that. There are a lot of people struggling. In fact, partly this is a mental health issue. Of course, some are clinical, but many are also due to evil spirits. And it's good that our young people become aware. Yeah. If you go and call saints, yeah, you know saints. Spirit, if you talk to spirits after that, you have them in your life. They will disturb you. And so it's good people really understand some of these things. If not, we'll see our loved ones being hurt so much in this end times. Again, just want to repeat that, please throw away all the other gods. Verse 24. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. That is how we respond. We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Verse 25. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people there at second, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws, and Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law. He wrote everything down. It was an agreement. He, then, then he took a large stone and set it up under the oak near the holy place of the law. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has Heard all the words of the Lord. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to God. In those days, that was the legitimate means to 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 finalize any contract. So now you can just sign, is it? And once you put your signature there, it's done. I think some time ago, I was using this finger, yeah. Yeah, so as a, as a society, we keep changing the way we seal our contract. In those days, they will use a large stone and then they will write some things on it to seal the agreement. And that's what Joshua did for them. He said, the whole community, you have now decided to worship the living God. So they wrote everything. Why? For the generations to come. So that the generation will always remember on this day, what was today is the 15th of August 2021. We, as a people, as a community, we made an agreement to worship the living God. And that will always remind us. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it ends that then Joshua dismissed the people each to their own inheritance. The meeting was powerful and the focus was simple. For the people to renew their covenant with God. And I'm sure this afternoon uh, we are all going to renew our love for God in many uh, phases, 
in many levels. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then we will start to live or continue to live as God's children until he calls us home. So your faith in God is not, it shouldn't be temporary. It should be a lifestyle until he calls you home. At the age of 70, 80, 90, you must still be in the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whether good or bad, we still worship God. Whether good or bad. There may be challenging times, yes, but there may be good times as well. So, and let's conclude. Joshua and Jesus both made Savior. Joshua helped the people to make, to make a covenant and Christ helps us to be reconciled to God. Both mean Savior. On that day, Joshua was giving them salvation. That was what he was doing. They mean Savior. Joshua and Jesus both mean Savior. And so that's the last slide. So Joshua was a type of Jesus bringing believers into the true rest of heavenly Canaan. He was like Christ. Type of Christ. Jesus gives people rest from their sins. Rest from their labor. Rest from their fear. Christ gives us rest. Christ Jesus. He does this by giving you a new life. A new mindset, the way you think will change. A new spirit. Everything new. That's what he does. In the book of Matthew 11, 28. I will see this invitation, not from Joshua this time, but from Jesus himself. Let's go to the book of Matthew 11. This time from the Savior the one who was sent to die for our sins. Joshua's task was to lead them to the promised land, to continue with that mission where Moses left. And Christ came to reconcile us. Peter was here to take us back to God. Joshua was giving them salvation. Christ is giving us salvation. The, the book of, of Matthew 11, 18. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. And this invitation is from Jesus. If you are tired, yeah, you carry a load that you are tired of. Christ says, come, and I'll give you rest. And it works. Uh, it works. That's what I'm preaching this thing. Because as pastors, we carry all kinds of loads. And sometimes we become help, so all we do is, Lord, we hand everything over to you. And before I realize, God will do his own thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ says, come to me, all you who are weary. The weary here refers to the condition of the soul, where the soul has been battered, because the soul has struggled and struggled to live, to make sense, to overcome something that is beyond the soul. The soul is weary. He says, if you are weary, come. And if you are burdened, come. If you carry any problem, come. It could be your sins. It could be trouble. It could be sickness. It could be anything. Just come. And I'll give you rest. And then he does this this way. He said, take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Amen. Amen. I, I will leave this verse to you to go and uh, explore further. Verse 39. How do we take Christ's yoke upon ourselves? And how do we learn from Christ? One thing I can, I can tell you is very simple Christ will never act in anger. Yeah? Christ, you never act in. Because if you act in anger, you hurt yourself. 
If you act in anger, you hurt the, the, the first person you hurt is yourself. Before even the next person. The next person can even decide not to even respond. And that will make you angry and more, right? Before you realize, I mean, your heart start pumping blood at the rate that is not necessary. <laughs> and Christ will not act in anger. When we begin to learn from Jesus, which all of us Christians are to learn from Christ, we are followers of Jesus. He does not act in anger. He does not hurt anyone. Wherever Acts 10, 38 tells us, wherever Jesus went, he was doing good. Wherever. I'm just mentioning some few things about our Lord. Difficult things, he will hand everything over to the Father. And then he'll be out there just doing good. They are main things. He will make time to pray to the Father. And he will not allow his will to prevail. He will always allow the will of the Father to prevail. Our will is a problem. I hope you know that. Now, anytime I'm stressed, uh, some of the questions I ask myself is that, Anthony, what is your will in all this? Do you want your will to prevail or God's will to prevail? And the moment I drop my own will, I find peace. Because, you see, the more we want our will to prevail, we, we do everything to shut everything around us and if possible to tell the world that he listen to us. This is what we want. And in doing that, involves a lot of energy. But when sometimes we allow not our will to prevail. I remember Sidney asked me a very good question the other day, two weeks ago, I remember. He said, I said, Christian, is it okay if someone cheats on you? And I said, yeah, that is perfectly right. Someone can, can, can bully you. Someone can, can undermine you. Someone can insult you. Someone can cheat on you. Someone can swindle you. Someone can deceive you. It's okay. Accept the loss. But you have peace. In fact, Jesus puts it this way. If someone slaps you here, give the other side. You have peace. We are talking about the life of Christ. So then you grow, you come to the point where you, you, you tell yourself that my life doesn't matter anymore. What matters is for others. So if it means I have to deny myself for, for others, it's okay. And the book of Romans 3 tells us that the way of peace, most people don't know, that is how we find peace in the world. That is why, so most of that is not all, it, it's not, it's, it, it shouldn't be that your will should prevail. Christ will always walk on the path of righteousness and forsake the world. Righteousness. In other words, he will do things that will only please the Father, that will qualify him to have the right standing with God. And check, the moment, the moment you begin to learn this way, you realize that you save yourself from hurt and harm. Christ will always walk on the path of righteousness, meaning that he will always attend to that which is pure and holy. And so when he invites us and says, come and take my yoke upon me, yourself and learn from me. It now gives us a new lifestyle of peace, of joy in the Holy Spirit. And then even when it comes to your soul, which is made up of your intellect, your heart and your emotions, or your will, it gives you a new mindset. And even your, 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 your desires becomes, they become godly. Godly desire, passion, for good things. So when anything is anything that is good, you realize that you have passion for that.
things that are not good and things that are not profitable. He said, these things are not interested. He changes us. Because all of us, we get burdened because of our own, sometimes ungodly desires and will and aspirations. Jesus is another type. Joshua is another type of Moses. Sorry, of uh, Joshua, another type of Christ. Both men, Savior. And this afternoon, I present to you Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That follow him, serve him, and he will lead you to the Father. He will lead to the Father. Of course, at this pandemic, many people have lost their life, and, and the question still re re remains that where would their soul be, right? Where would their soul go? There's heaven. There is hell. And the human soul is immortal. It lives forever. So once you die, the body will go back to the soil. It will decompose. God will take his spirit. But your soul will live forever. Where? Your soul goes. And so what Joshua did for the people, he was saving them. He was giving them eternal life. And the New Testament, Christ gives us eternal life. And so when the preacher man preaches and the people respond, then there is joy in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so church, uh, it's, it's almost two o'clock and this church, we, we, want, we want to close some time. So our gathering this afternoon has been very simple. To encourage you and I to renew our love for God. After the pandemic, right, for 18 months now, of course, some of us have been in church since, I think, November. And then we had a little break, and then we came back. And then after the, after the service, there will be food and drink, just what we call fellowship, also in the house of the Lord. And then uh, the church will be moving to another phase of church life very soon. Now that the Lord has been good to us, amen. amen. Now that God has been good to us, so we have every room to serve and to live for him. Unless bow down our heads.